Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Podcast, powered by First National Recording here at the Canadian Apartment Investment Conference um, as part of the speaker video series for uh, Informa. Our sponsor today is Kingset Capital. Always nice to be back here. I was thinking about that. This is our Super Bowl. Yeah. This is, yeah, as apartment right? lenders, like, yeah. this is as good as it gets. It's, I mean, uh, like the Toronto one's fun at the end of the year, but this is... This is it, baby. you know, and, it, and it's as comfortable. I, you know, those that don't listen, you know, First National, we're the largest apartment lender in the country. Adam and I do a lot of apartment lending. We spend like, quite a bit of time talking about apartments at the podcast and outside of the podcast. In fact, all day long talking about apartments. Um, if you have any CMC questions, let us know. That's that's the that's our our, our sweet spot. Uh, me specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ask Adam specifically. Uh, if you email me, I will email Adam. Um, not that I don't know the answer. It's just not my job. Um, and so I was, I was driving in this morning thinking, okay, this is, this is great, right? Like, here we go. Right into our sweet spot. I, I, there's going to be no conversation, no discussion, no topic where I'm not going to feel uncomfortable. And, and then Zev rolls up and goes, okay, here's my, here's what I do. And I go, uh, I don't, I don't know very much about this. <laughs> Super Bowl plans have gone to waste. <laughs> yeah. Zev Kirschman, uh, VP of customers. Sir, sorry, customer uh, success at Dash Q. Yes, sir. Okay. What, let's write in. What is Dash Q? Great question. Dash Q is Canada's leading lead to lease solution for multifamily landlords. We utilize conversational AI and an e commerce style checkout to drive centralization. We've been working with some of the largest landlords across the country and seeing great success, and their portfolios have been operating at a much higher level, and they're really resonating with the message. and and their teams are loving the solution. So tell, I mean, you, you can say the name of the bigger, big client, right? One of the, your biggest first client. Okay. There's a very large REIT. <laughs> a very large REIT. Owns, there's a very large REIT. That owns tens and tens of thousands of units. Yeah. That is, that is, um, one of, one of Dash's clients. Now Dash you, Q you clients. got four guesses. You'll get it yeah. right eventually. Yeah. 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 You'll get it right eventually. <laughs> um, it may, it may or may not be on our website. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they may have done an IPO in the last 10 years, five years, <laughs> three years. Um, and so you said lead to lease. Lead to lease. So that is the... From the moment uh, prospective tenant inquires until the moment they actually sign a lease, we manage that entire process in-house through our platform. So everyone from their marketing teams, their leasing teams, the asset management teams, the property management teams will interact with the platform. So they have a seamless, the tenants have a seamless experience from inquiry until lease. I haven't rented an apartment in a while. When I did it, it was just like go on Craigslist or Kijiji, click yeah. rent, and it was that easy. It was that easy back in the day. Technically, it still is that easy from the tenant experience, but from the landlord's perspective, there are so many uh, challenges in between. It, it's this every year story. If you have 10,000 units and you have a 20% turnover, every year you have to lease 2,000 units. It happens every year. Because you have to lease 10,000 units, you have to put up... 10, 15,000 ads. You have to get a hunt. You have to send 1.6 million communications to those leads that come in. Then you got to book 8,000 appointments. Then from those 8,000 appointments, you have to verify people's ID, credit checks, send out applications, send leases, sign leases just to get those 2,000 leases. It's a lot of work. And with the way the industry is structured, there's so many challenges from a business model perspective because typically most landlords in a 10, 15,000 plus range the way they operate is a one-to-one -one model. They have one person inside of one building that handles the leasing, the property management, the maintenance, the live-in super. They're just stuck. They can't, act, they can't actually meet the needs of today's tenants. So we're helping our clients evolve their business model from a one-to-one -one perspective into a distributed perspective where they're not reliant on a single individual. The tenants have a much better overall experience with their landlords and the landlord's team can become way more efficient. They can drive their own gains and it helps with staff, ret staff retention. Because at the end of the day, as like the demo, as the baby boomers retire, and you're gonna have a new generation of leaders show up in these companies. They're thinking those new that next generation thinking to themselves, how am I gonna be able to achieve my goals in the side of a company when I don't even have the tools to succeed? So let's let's walk it through. So Aaron and his three children and his wife decide that their suburban home is no longer for them. And he wants to get squeeze them all into uh, an apartment building. So his first step is he goes to this REIT, this mystery REIT. And he goes, I, hey, think his, I think his first step is to reconsider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 600 square feet, five people. I want the urban experience for my yeah. kids, okay? Yeah. So 
he, he goes, hey, that identifies, I guess, a building or he goes an online search and stumbles across, you know, prospective place to live. Like, what happens next for him? So what happens next is he'll get injected into Dash Q and our conversational AI attendant will start to talk to him. Hey, Aaron, when are we looking to move? We want to qualify you for some general elements, move-in date, budget, bedrooms, bathrooms. We'll, we'll find the perfect unit for you based on your criteria. We'll automatically book an appointment for you. Then that appointment will get triaged to a leasing agent. So you'll meet the leasing agent. They'll show you the property. They'll qualify you and say you're ready to apply. And then essentially you'll go online and dash Q. You'll click a button and you'll start your application process. Uh, fill in the application, verify your ID, verify your income. Typically before people, landlords were asking for ID, having pay stubs go online. We've centralized that entire process and made it uh, much more easy and user friendly. So essentially we've reduced the approval timelines from days to minutes. And at what point does a human step in? Right now there's five humans on his side. Yeah. On the landlord's side, at what point of this is a, a human intervene or are we still all kind of AI? We're gonna visit the things. site, right? Like the AI is not it's, touring the site with me. Or do you, do you pre-screen tenants before they tour the site or does it go the other way around? It depends on the landlord's uh, qualification standards. We can pre-screen for basic elements of budget move-in date, but some of our clients actually want to do the pre-screening of- Yeah, income, uh, income credit, verification. yeah, of they course. Do that. So based on our client's requirements, we can mold the platform to their specific business case. So theoretically, there's still no human involved on the landlord's side, it's still all automated. Aaron's halfway through the process at this point. Uh, Aaron uh, will meet an individual at the property. Uh, yeah, and that's the first time you have to That's have really a, the first time. There are some edge cases where they will talk to a human being because some people still want call centers. Yeah. And they actually, it's it's such a big evolution. At the end of the day, you have these landlords that, and, and owners that are looking at this problem and saying, I have my returns come in every year. It's, stand, it's, it's consistent. It, I, why do I have to break this system? And being able to inject elements into it and instead of a change management you know we usually rip off a band-aid quick and everyone always says just rip off the band-aid quick it won't hurt as much in this scenario ripping out the band-aid quick is disastrous because how are you going to justify you have consistent returns and then you're ripping up your entire operating engine and expecting the same returns it won't work you have to actually rip it off inch by inch by inch so with some of our clients will move in with the ai and just work on a first, second, third message, just to get it to booking, or if they want their call center to handle it, they can. And then based on where they feel comfortable, we'll find that right joint. So at the end of the day, there's minimal business interrupt, uh, minimal business interruption in the client's business. And then that way their team feels confident that they can move together with the platform. Otherwise, it's like having everyone in, in a one boat and everyone's trying to row in two different directions. And then in the credit check, we find out, you know, he's Missed his car payments. He's been kiting checks all over town. The works only a couple well, the, times. Well, yeah, only a couple times. Three, but the rest of the checks were all good. Um, will the system reject applicants without human intervention and notify them of that? No, not right now. What we do, it, we can. It just depends on everyone's everyone's uh, risk appetite in terms of qualification. At the end of the day, most landlords still want to have that control. The AI can go there. It's a question of comfortability, but. You could probably thing, provide a rank. You could like, provide, hey, you this, could guy's, yeah. this guy's probably better. Yeah. You, know. you could probably provide some suggestions in theory. But I think what it comes down to is the approval process is so uh, specific that sometimes what an AI model could totally miss just from a logic perspective, there's a human element of someone. Well, yeah, like that person that's given the tour and showing the suite, like they're the ones that are interacting with that individual. Like no matter what, yeah. you could look great on paper and then you could just get a sense of this track this, marks up your arm yeah, yeah yeah exactly right this guy's a creep like i don't want him living in my building right versus someone else that may have less quality on paper and you can tell they're a really decent human being and quiet or whatever the the very benchmark the benchmark and you'd be surprised some guy's got the the, the cut on his wrist he's actually 850 credit score he's yeah, ready yeah. 3.2 uh, uh, rent income well, that's it. Best yeah, you just uh, don't know yeah but there, there there are use ca there's edge cases where you can't just, it's not, it can't just be a yes, no. There's some, some landlords are prepared to take on more risk and landlords take on less risk. Some people exclusively work with newcomers to Canada. Some people tend to shy away from it. So it's really landlord dependent, but we give our, our clients the ability to really have that choice. So that way they're not boxed in and say, this is the only way it can be done. So, and again, it's been a while. So I'm on Kijiji or what are the other apps? Some of the other places that I there's there's rent.ca, rentals.ca, pad mappers, pad mappers. Uh, pad so I'm on there and I search. I want to live in 
on Queen Street West. And so all of a sudden there's 15 sites that pop up and I'm clicking on there. Yeah. If I click on one of your clients' buildings, yeah. it'll take me to your website or are you even embedded into those? No, platforms? we're just, we're, we're embedded. Essentially, we, we connect into those ILSs. And then we integrate the leads into our system, and then the, our system does right. the rest so, of the so, so part of the experience for the tenant or the future tenant is I click on one building, it takes me to their site that probably is, just, you know, a picture of the building. It yeah. says, click here to schedule, and then I'm now sending an email to somebody saying, hey, can I come view? Versus if I click on one of your clients' uh, links in yeah. rentals.ca or Padmapper, yeah. it's a, and now all of a sudden I'm getting prompted by... You're at dash Q and dot IO. Yeah. Dot IO Essentially, and we send the, the messages are actually coming from our clients. So whether it's omni channels, email, it's text message, or a phone call, depending on what channel they're interested in. And we're just getting back to people quickly. It's like speed to lead is everything in this business. When it comes from a marketing and a lead qualification perspective, it's speed to lead. Personalization matters, but at the 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 rental consumer is very fickle by nature. It's a it's, it's very it's very uh, transactional. It's not as much as relational it should be as opposed to selling a home. And at the end of the day, what pe tenants are looking for is who can get back to me the quickest? Can someone get me booked in quickly as Scheduling well? Scheduling must and be get, fast. get it done. Because they're looking at 70 different ILSs. They've inquired on 80 to 6 different properties. They don't remember a thing. They're just saying, who get it back to me fast? Who do I actually have confidence in that when I meet this person, they're going to actually meet my needs and rent me a place that I have trust in them long term? So that it's is, almost first impressions. First impressions matter. We our, our automated messaging on a first uh, first message basis alone, we're getting an eighty plus percent response rate. It's it's meaningful. It's a meaningful impact. So if you have a call center, and you have five, and you have however many reps, at the end of the day, if they had a hundred new leads and they walk in their day, they only have to follow up with technically they have eighty new messages to actually respond to, as opposed to I got to follow up with everyone and then figure out my responses. So their teams can operate more efficiently. They're going to get better value and ROI out of their marketing funnel. Their leasing agents are going to be happy because they have more appointments. And then more leases are going to come in. And I've never met a landlord that says, why do I have so many leases? Well, met a landlord that say, why the lease are, why the prices on the rent so low on these leases? But that's a different <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, it's not your responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> well, and imagine too, a lot of the, you know, the search activity, a lot of the, you know, the, these prospective tenants bubbling to the surface, becoming visible happens after work hours and weekends, because they're generally trying to earn Ab the rent money absolutely. nine to five. Absolutely, like 42% of inquiries come in after hours or on weekends. Yeah, of course. So yeah. how, do, how do most modern teams handle that right now? Especially when your site teams are off, your approvals team may be away on the weekend. There's so much inflexibility in that like one-to-one -one business model that we're really allowing our clients to transform to that distributed level. So that way they can, as the business evolves, they can evolve with it so they're not left behind. Because I, I really want to focus on this is the demographic bomb that's about to hit like everyone in terms of people retiring. As the next generation comes in, they're going to require a new level and a new skill set and new tooling to really succeed. And it's one of like the unspoken things in the industry is most landlords aren't prepared for that transition. And that's where you're going to see a lot more breakage because not uh, 35. If someone was wanted to be a live-in super now, I don't know if they want to do the same things with the same technology. So they're going to have to find a way to how are you going to train and retain that talent to operate the business at the end of the day, the returns come in, the cash flow comes in, you're, you as an owner are happy, your investors are happy. It's, it's not in focus right now. But as we start to move forward to the next couple of business cycles, it will start to be a reality. Well, it's also, I mean, why is the gap between the large scale professional landlords? Because that is the, your target market yeah. and some, you know, an individual that owns, you know, 220 plexes and they put a sign out front yeah. and they get a phone call, but they're busy doing something else during the day. They return the phone call the next day. Um, you know, they've already had responses from three other buildings that point, yeah. like those tenants. So it widens the gap between uh, the ability of small scale versus large scale to handle leasing, to keep buildings full, to yeah. get the, you know, the better end of the tenant spectrum, all of that. Well, the small landlords are actually doing, in many ways, they're forced to evolve quicker. They're feeling these problems at such a small level. And because they're, at the end of the day, landlords are like a, a speedboat. Some of the big REITs could potentially be like a cruise ship. It's way easier to turn a speedboat than it is to turn a cruise ship. So you have that flexibility inside of an organization that when you're at 5, 10, 15,000 units, it's really hard to rally your team around changing 
everything at once. You almost have to do it piece by piece. So those smaller landlords are actually changing much more rapidly. The existing landlords, they are changing, but sometimes they're stuck. They're just stuck because how do they do it? At the end of the day, are my returns going to be the same? And how can I make that consistent without disrupting the boat? And that's always been the challenge because imagine someone coming to any landlord and saying, I'm going to transform your business and I'm going to make everything better in 90 days. Yeah. Over like, 180 okay. buildings. Yeah, over, yeah, for <laughs> 20,000 units, I'm going, to, I'm going to transform your business in 180 days and life's going to be good. Everyone's going to say, wait, what, and no? Uh, show me how, please. So you have to really guide them along that journey and show them how, like we have a, a landlord maturity model, how you go from a one-to-one -one into distributed. And there's so many steps in between. But once we're able to sh give our clients that roadmap and show them how we're going to get there, and we, we show ourselves to be a trusted partner over time, because at the end of the day, one of the, Sam Altman said this best, uh, one of the best arbitrages left in the world is uh, time. So if you're in this, if you're in a space for decades, you'll be there. If you're just in for a short time, you just won't have that, that same traction. What about customization, um, you know, both between your clients, like different clients, but even within one client's portfolio, you know, I think certain clients in certain geographies might want to highlight attributes of a building. I, I think about ESG where, uh, you know, they spent a ton of money on sort of retrofit for, uh, you know, low carbon uh, consumption uses or, or whatever they, they, they've spent, they want to highlight this as a, a high environment impact building. And so they want that to be part of the lease to lead experience or okay. lead to lease experience. Right. So as soon as they click on that link, whether it's in PadMap or whatever, yeah. it should be very obvious. This is a environmentally friendly, carbon neutral building. Yeah. How does that work for you guys? Great question. Without getting into the weeds too, too much, we, connect with our clients inventory and their building amenities and then based on that we're able to either run our ai models or through manual communication what's in the features in our platform we can help communicate the value prop of each building on a unit specific level to that prospect so that way the messaging and the brand standards of each client holds true throughout the entire process yeah because I, I can see that as important being you know if i'm looking for my five bedroom unit because we're all my my family and kids yeah uh and it, it for whatever reason you've got five bedrooms and they're massive and they've got a rooftop balcony or something that should be very obvious as soon as i click on the link on padmapper yeah, right of course like, and that and we'll get you for 500 bucks a month yeah, right? yeah. So if you're moving out of the burbs then 15 hours north of here yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> In none of it. What about integration with our technologies? I mean, during COVID, uh, there was a big rise, obviously, in virtual tours, whether that was just, you know, a video going through the unit or a, uh, you know, like a, a door lock system that they yeah. could access it without having to see anybody else. Uh, if you're trying to further extend the period of time in the process before a human has to intervene, yeah. can you work with that technology? Is that desirable? Is that something that uh, you, know, you see as... Absolutely. It's, it's big in the States. One, one thing that I love about our team is we know what we're really good at in our core competency and where we're not the best we just want to be we just want to integrate with best in class third-party providers that's iot uh virtual uh showings whatever the case may be we're always looking for the best we don't we don't want to be the best at everything we want to be the best at something really at, at what we're really really good at and then just make sure we're providing the best value to our clients because we mentioned before like for us when we work with our clients it's a partnership we really look at this at a long-term perspective so we just want to do what's best for the client and making sure that they have the best operating engine. So as their business continues, they can see the benefits from it. But we integrate with all different types of partners across all spectrums. And it sounds like uh, obviously there is a value in human interaction, right? Yeah. The intangible. Um, when you're discussing kind of landlord's preferences here, it sounds like that maybe the technology would have a capability to go further without human interaction at all than maybe just the landlord's comfort level with having a completely digital experience versus a human intervene. So is the limiter more on just the nuances of human psychology where they eventually they want to see a real human being? Is that the more of a limiter on how deep you can go in automating the process? Yeah, and I think everyone has their own realities and compliance, but I think it, it's at, this is still a human business at the end of the day. Like this is where people want to live. We're building communities and you can't lose sight of that. You have to always keep in mind that Technology will play a role in this business, but the technology doesn't become this business. It's still a people business. How, how are you going to use technology to empower your team to succeed? And that's the, that's the balance that you have to strike. But 
and once people and once landlords get more comfortable with wanting to use more automation they can but if they also want to stay in that range of r much more human interaction then they can find that sweet spot and then we can deliver it when did you guys start this company we built this product about two and a half years ago in the depths of the pandemic um well, nothing better to do. Right? Nothing, nothing better to do. We uh, we pivoted from a, a. What's been the uh, the biggest surprise that you've encountered through this journey you've been on? Wow, so many. I th I was really surprised with how much people care about this process internally. You when you when you hear of all these big names, you you associate it with a big company, but you don't associate it with the people and the people behind the name and how much they actually care about really providing that best experience and, and finding better ways to operate and the curiosity they have to, to interact with people, what's the best practice, was really, really inspiring. The, I'd say the most surprising thing that, that I've seen personally is I'm shocked at seeing how some operations and how just the compliance, the rules, like I, I'm, I'm not used to seeing this many rules, this many layers of management and requirements. And like, can we just rip this out and make it 10 times easier? Last so, time I rented, I did have, I got in there and it was an old building, small operator, huge building, small operator. Yeah. And I had to go in and fill out a form. Like let's sit there. This wasn't that long ago. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like sit there and like, oh yeah, you want to have a, you want to yeah. rent a unit? Like before I could even start, you know, the engagement process, just go in and fill out this handwritten form. The process is the process is painful. There's still landlords that paper and pen. That's what they want to do, but you have to meet the demands of the tenant of where they are now and where they're going, and we're just the industry is blessed because we have such a we have such a supply shortage. And we have such a growing population that you can really get away with not being fully optimized in terms of your operation and still turn out great results. So it's a, that's, and they'll go back to the surprise. And that to me is the biggest surprise is seeing how unique some people operate, just not even our clients, just, just talking to people, how they operate. And it makes, it boggles my mind how they're able to still get the result, but they win at the end of the day because they're just riding the tailwinds of, of the market. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time, Zev. And I got one last question. I think yeah. it's a doozy. I hope this is, ends up as good as I think it is. I'm excited to hear um, it. Oh, me too. What's harder, finding the seed capital for the investment or finding the, t the, the client to take your product? Ooh. I would say it would be the client, but we're really breaking through on that. We're a bootstrap company and uh, we've been blessed. I've been blessed to have really amazing partners that just believe in this company and will continually invest. And the market's starting to resonate. Our, our GTM motion is really turning on strong and uh, Jeff will be announcing something. Our CEO will be announcing something later today on a new product that we're launching. And I think that's really going to make uh, a big impact. And we're just so the best both are easy it's easy to yeah, find yeah, money for yeah. investment it's easy to find that yeah. well, synthetic yeah. product yeah it's, uh, <laughs> the best of both worlds the, go the goldilocks yeah. ratio <laughs> you do have of course a nice momentum scenario in that uh there's always a bit of an arms race amongst the top end apartment operators in the country and yeah. so if they got a shiny new toy like uh your your product then you know the next guy has to get it too just to you know yeah. stay competitive well so I, I, nice. I know from 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 personal experience, the first thought you always have is, well, I'll just build it myself. I'm going to hire a couple of coders and we're yeah. going to go build this thing. And on fiber.com. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. And I, I think we're far enough through the cycle of business owner operators, like the guys that are making the decision in the boardrooms to have learned that mistake enough now to, you know what? No, no, no. Just go find somebody who's got the expertise yeah. and you can plug in your, your software with another software with another software and it's still going to be a seamless experience right yeah and just to your point the the biggest challenges that one of the landlords are, have experienced now is these almost work solutions there's all these companies that have great technology but they're just almost work they're 80 percent good but they're missing that 20 percent that really make it go and what we're trying to do is solve for that piece of we just want to be a solution that works that their team like to use and that they get results from. 
Well, it's funny. We're, uh, no, now we're, I, I said we we're almost well, out of time. Yeah, sorry. Well, no, this is just a comment. Then hey, we'll this, wrap. We're, this is a Super Bowl. Yeah. We're in overtime. Yeah. It's all yeah. good. It's just yeah. a comment. It's just a comment. Because when I first started talking to you, maybe even off air, I assumed you were a like soup to nuts lead generation leasing plus sort of property management operations platform. And when you said, no, we're not, I thought, oh, that's weird. Why wouldn't they be all the way through? But now as I've talked to you for 30 minutes, we've interviewed you. You're focused on the one thing to do it really, really be, well. Be a yeah. very strong link in the chain, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Versus if you try to do everything, it becomes your, your like you said, it's a half solution or, or it, almost. Almost, almost works. Solution. Yeah. This is a network. It's, it's about building a network, not a moat. The more nodes you can connect in the network, the better everyone works well together. If you build a moat, you're stuck in that castle and that can work all that can work well, but only for so long. Yep. Okay. That was for real. The last question. Yeah. On uh, we are going to wrap your Of course, we do want to uh, thank our sponsor today, King Set, for uh, speaker video series and forum for hosting us here at the Canadian Department of Investment Conference. Most of all, Zev, thanks for your time today. Yeah, My I really pleasure. appreciate it. That was good. It was a great time, guys. Thank you. Did we win the Super Bowl? You tell me. Yeah. Yeah, we won. Okay, good. Who's the MVP? That's the real question. Yeah. yeah.